and I will be talking about CT of bowel and mesenteric injuries. Bowel and mesenteric injuries are not easy to diagnose. They are not common, occurring in only about 2% of blunt abdominal trauma patients, and we do know that they are uh, slightly more commonly seen in patients who have the seat belt sign or who suffer chance fractures. It is the leading cause of failed conservative therapy and delayed laparotomy in blunt trauma patients. And we also know that a short delay in diagnosis of not more than eight hours is an important cause of subsequent morbidity and mortality. So we will cover some aspects about the technique of CT for these patients and then uh, direct uh, aspects about bowel injuries and mesenteric injuries. So in general, we uh, acquire images with a thin uh, slice uh, reconstructed at thicker slices. So we use 1.25 millimeters and then reconstruct them at 3.75 and use mostly the thicker slices for evaluation. And we have the thin slices to rely on for problem solving. Uh, of course, IV contrast is uh, almost mandatory for these patients. No oral contrast is necessary. And we typically use a portal venous phase at about 65 to 70 seconds and uh, uh, following a 30 second chest acquisition when a chest, abdomen, and pelvic CT is required, which is almost routine in these severely traumatized patients. In addition, we selectively acquire delayed images at about 15, five minutes post injection, and every series uh, acquired uh, has direct multiplanary formats generated, and we also liberally use 3D imaging as necessary. The five-minute uh, delayed images are important, not just for evaluation and detection of uh, renal collecting system integrity, but also to identify and characterize sources and areas of bleed in the abdomen. Whenever these images are acquired, the delayed phase, it is recommended that the radiation dose be lowered. At our institution, we do it by decreasing the tube current to approximately one-third of that used for the portal venous phase. These delayed images are useful in about 16% of all blunt trauma patients in our experience. So let's move uh, directly into a discussion of bowel trauma. On CT, these are all the findings that have been described in the literature. Some are very specific uh, meaning uh, the finding of either discontinuity in the wall or extraluminal oral contrast, if given, will mean that the patient almost certainly has a bowel injury. And then at the bottom, we have the most sensitive sign that is the presence of free intra or retroperitoneal fluid, but it's also the least specific of all. So even though the vast majority of patients with bowel injuries will have free fluid, most patients with free fluid do not have a bowel injury. And in the middle, we have all the other signs that when found in combination are really the ones that are most useful for making this important but difficult diagnosis. So here's uh, one example. Uh, during the time when we used to give oral contrast, Yes, uh, we can see that there is extraluminal contrast arising from this loop of uh, injured uh, small bowel. But notice that it is not the only sign. There is blood in the mesentery, there is a stranding in uh, the mesentery of this uh, loop of bowel, and there's also bowel wall thickening. So even without oral contrast, we should have been able to make this diagnosis. This is uh, one example of uh, an injury to the lesser curvature of the stomach with where you can see an obvious area of discontinuity in association with massive pneumoperitoneum and extravasation of oral con contrast. Again, a very infrequent sign uh, seen in practice, but one that very specifically indicates that there is a significant injury. The most common and important sign is bowel wall thickening. It has to be focal in order to be uh, secondary to bowel trauma, and it can be either an area of contusion, hematoma, or ischemia, or even a combination of any of these three, but any of them indicates that the patient should have a laparotomy and usually a segmental resection. Diffuse wall thickening is not an indication of um, bowel injury. It is secondary to hyperperfusion and the so-called shock bowel. Uh, 
the evaluation or the determination of thickening is mostly subjective. Uh, measurements are not that useful. And we also always have to take into account the state of distension of the bowel. And again, remember the delayed images are going to be important in this case. So any area of thickened bowel that persists into the delayed images will very likely be a sign that the patient does have a significant injury. Always review the multiplanar reformats and look for associated findings that will almost always be present. So here we have one patient where the axial images demonstrate a focal area of thickening in this loop of small bowel. Notice also that there is stranding and hematoma in the mesentery. Combination of findings are highly specific for bowel trauma and that was proven at laparotomy. Another similar patient, focally thickened loop of uh, jejunum, hemoperitoneum, but there's also blood in the mesentery. Notice in the sagittal reformation how we see these triangular accumulations of blood in, in between the leaves of the mesentery in the same area of the thickened loop. Again, very specific combination of findings indicating that the patient has a, a bowel injury. Another patient, similar findings of bowel wall thickening and stranding in the mesentery. This, on the other hand, is not bowel trauma. Notice the diffuse thickening, the hyperenhancement in uh, the wall of these loops of jejunum with fluid in the third spaces, uh, intraperitoneal, retroperitoneal, typical appearance of shock bowel in someone who had absolutely no sign of a bowel trauma but had a hypovolemic shock from lower extremity fractures. Extraluminal air is another very important sign. It can be located either within the peritoneal cavity or in the retroperitoneum. We change our windows to lung or uh, bone settings to detect the smaller gas bubbles of extraluminal air. Uh, it is a very sensitive sign. About 70% of the patients will have it, but not all patients with confirmed bowel trauma with perforation have extraluminal gas on CT. And there are also a few potential causes for false positive uh, interpretations of extraluminal gas. Pneumoperitoneum can be massive, as in this patient who has injury to the distal small bowel. Notice the thickening and hyperenhancement in these loops. But it can also, and actually more commonly, be small uh, bubbles of gas within the mesentery, as in this patient who, in addition, has a mesenteric uh, hematoma. We change the windows, and these gas bubbles become more apparent. Notice also that this particular patient has a hematoma in the abdominal wall. This is the seat belt sign on CT, highly associated with bowel injury, as I mentioned on my initial slides. Another patient with similar findings, pneumoperitoneum, thickened loops of small bowel, blood in the mesentery, all signs of uh, bowel injury, especially when seen in combination. This is one patient with a missed rectal injury. Notice that there is an adrenal hematoma and there's a small, tiny, I would say, gas bubble outside of the posterior wall of the rectum. Uh, this patient uh, was admitted and five days later was having fever, toxicity. We repeated the CT and there's a massive uh, gas collection in the soft tissues extending to the buttocks. We uh, confirmed with um, a sigmoidoscopy that there was a rectal tear that was subsequently repaired. Pseudonumoperitoneum represents air trap between the abdominal wall and the peritoneum, and it is a, a, a relatively common cause of uh, difficulties in uh, detection and diagnosis of uh, bowel injuries. So this is an example of um, pseudonumoperitoneum, where you have linear gas collections accumulating outside of the peritoneum between the parietal peritoneum and the abdominal wall musculature. This patient had no intraperitone intraperitoneal injury. The source of this extraperitoneal gas was arising again from the rectum. Notice there's a sacral fracture with a rectal tear that allowed uh, escape of gas through uh, the pelvis into the buttocks and then accumulating in the anterior abdominal wall. If you have a question about whether this gas collection is intra or extraperitoneal, you can always repeat a CT scan or uh, perform a decubitus uh, series 
where intraperitoneal gas is expected to move with gravity. Another patient with both pseudonumoperitoneum here and the true pneumoperitoneum outlining the liver surface, and also there is a pneumothorax patient, uh, present in this patient. Changes in enhancement of the bowel wall may be another sign of uh, bowel injury, not very frequently seen and perhaps more difficult to perceive, but notice in this patient who has uh, some uh, free uh, blood in the abdomen and in the mesentery, there is a focal area of decreased enhancement in the bowel. This patient was taken to the operating room and there it is, the confirmation with a surgical specimen of a focal area of bowel ischemia that required a short uh, segment resection. Intramural and intraluminal bleeds can also be seen and that's one of the reasons why positive oral contrast really should not be ad administered in these uh, trauma patients. This patient has an intramural focus of bleed and this second patient has an intraluminal focus of bleed. Both required uh, surgical intervention. Notice on this patient on the right that there is also a mesenteric hematoma and some thickened loops of jejunum in the left side uh, of the abdomen. Interluminal bleeding can also be uh, better characterized with delayed images as in this patient where the initial scan shows uh, high density material within the lumen of these loops of small bowel which have increased in size in the five minute delayed scan indicating that there's active bleeding into the lumen of bowel. Notice uh, by the way the increased noise uh, because of the reduction in um, the MAS on the five minute delayed scan in this patient. Let's move on now to talk about mesenteric trauma. The findings on CT include a focal mesenteric hematoma, hemoperitoneum with or without a sentinel clot, active extravasation of contrast or changes in the caliber of a vessel uh, such as pseudoaneurysms and uh, most commonly focal mesenteric uh, uh, infiltration with blood. The management really depends on whether or not there is likely a, an associated bowel injury or ischemia secondary to the injured uh, mesenteric vessel. So here we have one patient who suffered blunt abdominal trauma and we see multiple, multiple uh, large mesenteric hematomas in the uh, mesentery here of the large bowel and in the mesentery of the small bowel. This patient was explored and required a, a small bowel resection because of an injured mesenteric vessel. Another patient with a huge hematoma in the mesentery of the small, small bowel, we even see an interrupted uh, branch of a mesenteric artery in uh, the coronal reformation. This patient did also go to the oper operating room and required not only evacuation of the hematoma, but resection of a segment of jejunum. Uh, when uh, we see multiple or multifocal hematomas, as in this patient, you can see uh, all slides show different areas of bleeding into the mesentery. This is also a good indication that the patient suffered a very significant injury and that in all likelihood, at least one loop of small bowel will uh, require a resection. And that was uh, the case in this uh, patient. Uh, we can also see non-focal diffuse mesenteric bleeds, which uh, are uh, more uh, infrequently found. Notice here the vessels enhance. Uh, normally there is a thickened loop of small bowel surrounded by an, a broad area of bleeding into the mesentery. This patient required uh, an operation as well and a short segment resection of small bowel. Uh, I would say that if the hematoma is not very focal, and not very large follow-up uh, with subsequent CT can be performed as well. Typically, that CT should be done within 8 to 10 hours of the initial CT to avoid uh, bowel perforation if, in fact, a, a segment of the bowel was injured. Active extravasation of contrast into the mesentery is not a common finding. This is one case where there is very significant uh, accumulation of uh, contrast-enhanced blood in the right lower quadrant. Obviously, this patient uh, required an intervention. We um, also use the five-minute delayed scans for further characterized uh, bleeds uh, in the mesentery, such as in this case, 
notice that on the portal venous face CT image, there is a subtle but real blush of contrast in the mesentery. We go ahead and acquire the delayed scan, and uh, sure enough, that blush has enlarged. Uh, uh, the density is a little bit larger or uh, higher than that of the circulating blood. Notice also how the amount of hemoperitoneum has increased. So this patient who is actively bleeding requires some sort of hemostatic therapy, which can be operative or via embolization. In this particular patient, an embolization was performed and no surgical resection was required. Uh, we have another example here of an omental laceration with active bleeding. The blush hasn't really enlarged significantly in the five minute delayed scan. This patient was managed conservatively with observation alone. Another patient with uh, active extravasation of contrast, in this case uh, coming from the kidney and also in the mesentery, uh, was taken to the operating room and required both a uh, nephrectomy and a uh, small uh, bowel resection of a short segment. The delayed images or the importance of those delayed images cannot be uh, emphasized enough. Notice in this uh, particular patient how the polovenous face CT shows a, a hematoma in the omentum and mesentery, but not uh, very easy to determine whether or not there's a focus of active bleed. We do the delayed scan, and here it is. That blush is very apparent on the five-minute delayed scan. And when we look back, sure, there is a very small but real uh, blush of contrast on the polovenous face CT that has enlarged at five minutes. So whenever we see a finding that is suspicious for any traumatic injury on the portal venous face CT, uh, not just in the bowel or the mesentery, the strict recommendation is to go ahead and acquire the five minute delayed scan. And even if there's a question of, a, of an injury on the initial portal venous face series, uh, the five minute delayed scan will be helpful in confirming or denying whether or not there is a true injury. Another similar example where we see blood accumulating in the percolate gutter on the left and growing into a five minute delayed scan, patient is actively bleeding, required a laparotomy for uh, hemostasis. This is a patient with an isolated uh, focus of active extravasation into the mesentery with no changes in the uh, wall of the small bowel or the colon, the decision was made to treat with embolization and no uh, surgery was required uh, subsequently. And uh, finally, this is an example of a pseudoaneurysm in a uh, branch of the superior mesenteric artery seen on both the axial and the coronal image that was also treated with angiography and embolization. Let's move on to talk about uh, free fluid in trauma. Uh, in females, the presence of free fluid as the only finding is usually uh, determined to be a physiologic finding due to the menstrual cycle. In males, however, uh, it usually or it may raise the question of the so-called occult bowel injury. Two papers published between 2008 from our institution and another one from uh, Richmond in Virginia Commonwealth University in 2010 looked at both, uh, both of them looked at large numbers of male patients who suffer blunt trauma, and the findings in these studies are remarkably similar. Uh, it is expected that between 3 and 5% of male patients will have small amounts of free fluid in the pelvis, low in attenuation, without any sign of a bowel or solid organ injury. And uh, it is thought that this uh, higher incidence or frequency of free fluid in the abdomen may be secondary to the larger amounts of fluids that people that patients are receiving uh, during resuscitation after admission to the ER. So this is the type of patient we're talking about, a young male patient who has no injury in the abdomen but has a small amount of free fluid, low in attenuation of the pelvis, no injury was uh, subsequently found in this patient who recovered without uh, any laparotomy or laparoscopy. Another patient, free fluid in the pelvis, small amount, uh, low in attenuation, six ounce per units, no injury found. This patient, on the other hand, 
has a high density fluid in the pelvis, slight, slightly larger amount of fluid, so this is hemoperitoneum. In these cases, we have to very meticulously uh, evaluate the remainder of the images and a small liver laceration was found, perhaps the cause of the hemoperitoneum, although of course we cannot prove that. Uh, either way, this patient did not require a laparotomy. Occasionally, we run into cases like this where there's hemoperitoneum in uh, the uh, hepatorenal fossa seen uh, on the right, and there's also a little bit of fluid in the right paracolic gutter, high density, and no source was found. Uh, the 5 minute delayed scan again shows that there is a hemoperitoneum, no real change in the amount of fluid. Uh, this is likely secondary to a small injury in the mesentery uh, with a, a venous injury possible. So what is the sensitivity of the various CT signs that have been uh, described on CT? Uh, free fluid, 93% mesenteric bleeding, 83% while thickening about 40%. And this is in one paper uh, with 30 confirmed patients with a bowel and mesenteric injury at laparotomy. About 25% of free air discontinuity and hypoenhancement seen very uncommonly. All patients had at least one finding and in another paper uh, from 2013 in the Journal of Trauma, 68 patients with proven bowel injuries, all patients at least one finding. So this again underscores the lack of need of giving oral contrast for these uh, blood trauma patients. So what do we do with uh, these uh, patients who have free fluid as the only finding on CT? Uh, we, as I said, carefully scrutinize for direct signs of bowel or mesenteric injury. If nothing is seen, the recommendation is to admit and observe for development of any signs or symptoms that could indicate that the patient does have a bowel injury, and we offer the possibility of a repeat CT, which at that point could be performed with water-soluble oral contrast. Two examples here, this patient uh, suffered a blunt injury, the first scan on the left shows fluid around the duodenum, no real changes in the duodenal wall to speak of. 12 hours later, the patient was asymptomatic. We repeat the CT with oral contrast. The fluid has uh, resorbed and there is no uh, finding to suggest a bowel injury. No laparotomy was necessary. Different patient, initial CT shows an adrenal hematoma, uh, seat belt sign in the anterior abdominal wall, uh, blood around the duodenum shown here, maybe some poor definition of the medial wall. Again, we recommended admission, observation, and repeating ACT with oral contrast, water-soluble, which was done a few hours later. And here we see better a contained perforation uh, in the duodenal wall, which at surgery uh, was actually a full thickness perforation that required uh, repair. So free fluid, uh, if, the, if it is the only finding, again, you have the option of repeating a CT, although over time we have uh, moved uh, progressively away from repeating the CT and relying more on the clinical evolution of the patient. The same can be said about the rectum. If you have a question about a rectal tear or a colonic tear, which are not very common in blunt trauma but do happen, you have the option of... Uh, repeating the CT with, with rectal contrast as done in this patient who has blood in the left paracolic gutter. The question was whether or not the rectal wall was intact. Uh, we gave uh, rectal contrast and we see uh, the bleed, the blood in the, in the peritoneum, but no definite evidence of um, uh, rectal or colonic tear. So in summary, uh, bowel and mesenteric injuries are not easy to diagnose. They are uncommon. We have to always be on the lookout for the subtle signs of both bowel and mesenteric injuries. Uh, look especially for focal wall thickening and focal mesenteric fluid. And if the two occur in, in combination, that's a very good sign that the patient does have a significant injury that requires a repair. Uh, if you're still giving oral contrast, I think that practice uh, can be abandoned and maybe only use it if a repeat CT is performed, which, as I said, we are performing less and less uh, of those in our practice. If uh, you find uh, free fluid, low in attenuation and limited to a pelvis, highly unlikely that the patient will have 
a uh, bowel injury, you always have the option of recommending or in fact should recommend admission and observation and then uh, give the surgeons the option of repeating ACT. Finally, I want to remind everyone that uh, a missed bowel injury is a devastating complication of these blunt trauma patients. It is the one injury that uh, radiologists uh, do uh, poorly in diagnosing and the one that we should be or are responsible for detecting. This is not an injury that can be left to the surgeons or clinicians to diagnose. It is the radiologist's responsibility. Thank you very much.